So today we're throwing together a food order solution. We're going to use MS Forms to give us a somewhat flexible way for our people to put in their food orders. When they've done that, we're going to use Power Automate to shuttle that information over into a SharePoint list, which is a favorite data store of mine, and gives us all sorts of possibilities how to use that data in the future. And then finally, we're going to email that out to the kitchen staff so that they know what their order is. So this is our MS Forms. I just have a delivery date there. I have generic menu options one or two, which they'd have every day. Or you can choose other to say, you know, option two without anchovies for special orders. And of course, I'll get the person's name because in the settings, I'm making sure that we're recording name. And we're not limiting it to only one response per person because, well, I might want them to use the form to order for tomorrow as well. Okay, so let's create the list as our data store. There's no templates that are really suitable for this one, so we just go for a blank list, which we will call food order. don't really have any use for the title field here, but let's add the columns for the other data. So we have the date. This is going to be date of delivery. Because date of order wouldn't really make sense. So let's just default that to today's date. And then we want to store other information. Single line of text will do it. Let's just store here the actual food order itself. So this is going to be choice one, choice two, or special delivery. And then finally, we want to know who this is. And one of the things I know I'll be able to get from my MS form is the requester email. You know what? That'll probably do it. Let's just change this view. Get rid of title because we're not using it and I can actually base the columns later on on a view. So let's have the view doing exactly what I want it to. Okay, so let's start about creating a flow. This is going to shuttle our information from forms to SharePoint. I happen to know there's already a pre-built template for this one. There's no point reinventing the wheel. Just look for forms. There it is, record form responses to SharePoint. Okay, so this gives us almost everything already. Let's just select the form. There we go, food order. Ah, the helpful text isn't being very helpful. Okay, so we can see it's getting the list of responses already. Let's just say, yeah, it's the food order form. And then we're going to create an item in SharePoint. Which SharePoint? Well, for here, it's going to be the dev site. And it's going to be that list which we just created, food order. So let's be very specific about what goes where. So it can already show us the fields in that list. And we're just going to define then with some dynamic content. Yeah, so we'll just put the text default in title because it's a mandatory field, date of delivery, menu order, and the responder email, which is coming over from MS Forms, of course.
Let's do this next flow, which is actually going to do the recording of our content from the list. So this is going to be a scheduled cloud flow because this is going to run at a regular time every day. So let's call this Notify Kitchen. And we're going to run this every day. Let's choose a good time. 11.15, give them plenty of time to get the order ready and create. Okay, let's do some work. New step. And the first thing we're going to do is get some items from SharePoint. So get items. And of course we have to choose our dev site where that list was. So we're pulling over those food orders from the food order list. Let's just do a bit more here. Well, let's limit the columns in the query by the ones in the view. That's why I took title out before. It's just needing things up a little bit. And then we have to do a filter query here, an OData filter, so that we have just the orders for today. So it's not showing me in dynamic content the name of my column. So I need to do a little bit of a hack to get this one. What I need to do is just pop over to SharePoint to find out what the internal column name is. So the trick is you go to list settings and you click on the column in question, which is date of delivery in this case. And then if you just look in the URL, you'll see the internal field name there, which we'll just copy so that I can paste that into the expression. It really should be simpler. Okay, so the date of delivery we're going to want this to be greater than yesterday and less than tomorrow. So we do a GT for greater than. And then let's just build up the date with a UTC now. There we go, we'll format it so that we know exactly what we're comparing. Notice there's no seconds or anything in here because I want to be comparing, you know, midnight to midnight with all the times I do here. Let's just do an add days because I want this to be yesterday. And so I add actually a minus one. Okay. Then we do an and, logical and. And then we're gonna do a less than LT. And we're going to do a similar thing with the date. There we go. Do the formatting. And this time I'm adding one day because this is tomorrow. So I'm just going to be pulling back with this filter today's orders. Okay, looking good. Next stage, let's format that output from the query against SharePoint so that it's going to look nice when we email it. So we're going to create an HTML table. Value, which is the list of items retrieved. But columns, no, no, not automatic. We are going to choose what our table looks like. So I'm going to specify headers for each of the items that I would like to display in the HTML table. So let's put in the requester email. Then let's put in the actual food order. Okay, okay, food choice, let's call it. And of course, this is just coming from that SharePoint query. These values will only come from today, but just to confirm, we'll put in the delivery date too, just in case anything goes rather strange with this. Save as we go is always good practice. And then finally, we are going to email the results. This will be good enough.
Now, of course, you could put some dynamic content in the subject line, such as the date, today, etc. Yeah, I know, I'm sorry, I'm being a bit lazy. And since this is just a demo, a very brief email, like, oh, here is the food order. And of course, let's get the output from the HTML table action there. So this should be good enough. Save. Okay, time to test. So let's just fill out a food order here. Yeah, today, let's make it a special order just to really test the thing. There we go. Submit. So that should have gone across to SharePoint almost instantaneously. Ah, there we go. So now, if we run the Notify Kitchen flow, we should get the email. So let's have a go with that one. It's running. Ah, the suspense. Failed! Ah, okay. What have I done? Something in the get items. So I have probably got the O data wrong. Let's have a look. Can I see anything in here? Oh yeah, look, I didn't put any quotes around the query terms. Well, you know, demo effect and all that. Just in case you think that I know it all. Now the truth is out. So there we go. Single quotes. Single quotes. Should be able to run that again. Surely now. <laughs> okay. My own data still isn't correct. Okay, I forgot to put the column name into the second, so it's <laughs> just missing what we're comparing it to. Okay, I'm going to put money on it. This time it's going to work, okay? Okay, save, successful. Let's test again. And run successfully. Okay, so I should have an email with the correct order inside it. Looking good. Although, of course, the proof is in the inbox. And there it is. Okay, food orders works.